Welcome to today's video tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be covering the general procedures for modding the 2006 console versions of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. This video covers the overall procedure for modding your game. Other, more specific procedures will be covered in later videos. Additionally, you can find a written version of this tutorial that covers this information and more in depth within the description of this video. Before you mod your game, you must first have a copy of it. Many of the console versions have been preserved on various archive sites. This includes the PS2 version, the PSP version, the Wii version, and the original Xbox version. You can find links to these in the written version of this tutorial. The Xbox 360 and PS3 versions have not been archived so far. While it is possible to find these versions of the game through other means. We at Marvel Mods don't endorse these methods. It is against our community guidelines to discuss piracy or share pirated game links. You will need to extract the assets from the original disc version of the game to be able to modify the Xbox 360 or PS3 versions. It is also important to note that mods will not work on stock consoles. In order to run mods, you must either use an emulator, or you need to have a console that's been modified to accept modded games. Every process is different, and each console and emulator has its own community, so those procedures won't be covered here. Before moving on, we'd like to point out a few things about console modding. First off, the tools needed to install mods on the console versions of the game can only be installed and used on the PC. You'll need to extract, modify, and compile everything on your computer. But after that, you can send the files to your console if you're not using an emulator. Unlike the PC version of Ultimate Alliance, Mod Organizer 2 will not work for console versions. That program is designed for PC. Because of this, it's important to be very careful when installing mods in the console version of the game. Take it slow, and only change a few things at a time, testing as you go along. The last thing that's important to note is that Ultimate Alliance has certain limits to how extensively you can mod it. We've done our best to research the limits, but not everything is completely clear cut. You can find full descriptions of the known game limits in the description of this video. Before you can start installing mods on consoles, you'll need to know how to extract and compile the assets. The assets on consoles are built very differently from the PC version, so there are extra steps you need to take to access them. First off, most consoles will store their files on a disk image, such as an ISO file. The Xbox and Xbox 360 versions are the exception to this rule, as the files can be removed from the disk directly. Every other console has its own program to extract the assets from the ISO, and those programs are also used to rebuild the ISO when you're ready to run the game. You can find recommendations and links in the print version of this tutorial. Instructions for use can be found on those sites. Once you've extracted the game files from the ISO, you'll see the folder structure. As you can see, it's considerably different from the PC's folder structure. Sounds and movies are stored in their appropriate folders, but everything else can be found inside the Z folder, in an archive called assetsfb.wad. This file can be opened with any publicly available archive program, such as WinRAR or 7-zip. Within assetsfb, you'll find the conventional folder structure that matches the PC version, but you'll notice that there aren't many files in these folders. That's because on consoles, most files are stored in FB packages. These can be found within the Packages folder of Assets FB, and they require special tools to extract and compile them. Many mods will simply require you to drag and drop new FB packages into the appropriate folder. However, certain mods, such as skins, will require you to extract and compile the FB packages. Here's the general procedure to do that. You'll first need to download the FB package tools from Marvel Mods. The link can be found in the print version of this tutorial. When you extract the files, you'll notice two folders, BAT files and FB tools. The first place to go is the FB tools folder. In there, you'll see several programs. Copy these files to C Windows, which will allow you to run the programs from any folder. Now, you can go to the BAT files folder. This folder has batch files that will run the FB programs for the files you've added to this folder. To start, 
Place the FB files that you want to edit into this folder. Note that on consoles, the same file may appear in several different FB packages. An example is the best way to show this. If you wanted to change out Wolverine's main skin, you would need to get the two packages for his primary skin, as well as the packages of any maps where he appears as an NPC. They're shown on screen now. However, you should only ever edit one map file at a time. On the console versions, map geometry files all have the same name, so editing multiple ones at the same time will cause them to overwrite each other. Because of this, we'll start with just these three files. To extract the files from the FB packages, double click on fbextractor.bat. It will ask if you want to create package files. You can type n for no. It will then dash through multiple lines of code for each FB package and then it will close when it's complete. You'll notice that now there are several new folders and files in the bat files folder. These are the contents of the FB packages. At this point, you can replace any files you would like to change out, such as skins. Be sure that any files you're adding are compatible with your console version. You can also edit the CFG files for each FB package to add or remove files in the FB package. But only do this if the mod tells you to, or if you know what you're doing. Once you've finished editing the files, you can double click on fbbuilder.bat to rebuild the FB files. The program does this automatically for you, but you'll need to press enter when prompted, once per package that you're compiling. As you can see, editing console files takes a bit more work compared to the PC version, but you'll use these exact same compiling and decompiling principles every time you do it. Now that you have the game, and you know how to extract and rebuild the files, you can start modding it. Most mods are very simple to install. All you have to do is drag and drop the files from the download into the appropriate place in the packages folder within Assets FB. If the mod requires other steps, it will often tell you what to do. The order that you install mods does matter. The links to all the mods are provided in the written version of this tutorial. Unfortunately, the official characters pack has not been fully converted to consoles yet. However, Many of the characters from the official characters pack have been converted. You can find those, along with additional character mods you may want to install, in the console version section of the forums. The console versions have far fewer mods than the PC version. You must also ensure that the character you're installing will work on your console. Additionally, the 36 and 50 roster hacks will not work on the console versions, so you're limited to the stock roster size. On the Xbox and PS2 versions, you can have up to 27 characters. On the Wii and PSP versions, you can have up to 29 characters. Next, you can store any boosters, which can also be found in the console version section of the forum. If you'd like to change the appearance of any of your characters, you can next optionally install any skins you'd like. You can find links in the skin thread catalog. Full details on how to install skins can be found in the written version of this tutorial. We will also be making a video to cover it at a later time. Lastly, you can choose to install any other miscellaneous mods. If you wish to install sound packs, they must be converted to work for your console. Every platform uses its own format for sounds. If you intend to make any changes to your roster, you must now change your hero stat. This is the last thing you should do after installing mods, but before running the game. Full information on how to do this can be found in the written version of this tutorial, and videos covering the topic will be created at a later date. Remember that any time you make changes to your hero stat, you must start a new save file. On console versions, the hero stat can be found in the data folder of assetsfb.wad. Once you've rebuilt the assets as needed for your console, you can play the game. With all this in mind, you can now install mods to the console versions. If you have further questions about any of the information provided, first, check out the written version of the tutorial. If you still need help, feel free to come by our community Discord server, and ask any questions you may have there. We'd like to thank every single one of you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, well, why not check out some of our other content too? Feel free to leave comments down below, but please do try to keep it civil. 
If you want to experience any mods shown off in our videos, check out and join our community over at www.marvelmods.com or our official Discord server. Links are in the description. See you all next time.